Hi, today I'm going to cover the analysis of KPIs, which are key performance indicators. KPIs will usually be non-financial metrics such as customer retention, customer satisfaction, service consumption rate, etc. And these metrics are really important to a business because they have direct impact to the bottom line of EBITDA. These KPIs will usually not make their way into the financial system, but instead stored in the company's internal database. For example, SQL is a very common form of database that stores non-financial metrics. It's in every company's interest to analyze these KPIs to assess the health of the business's operation, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. In today's case, we are a streaming company, very similar to Netflix, Hulu, and more. And the company is thinking of venturing into in-house production films. This was in light of a research result that showed in-house production films increased engagement of casual and avid consumers. However, since the company is relatively new, having opened in 2021, we haven't really divided our customers into these categorizations yet. The CEO wishes to begin categorizing them into their respective categories to compare the company's performance against industry benchmarks. We have been provided market data research results, and using this information, we have to categorize the customers into the categories of casual, avid, and active. Once completed, we then have to analyze the data set and then compare the results to the industry benchmarks listed here. Lastly, we then have to create a small dashboard showing the executives of the importance of the metrics. The approach that I plan to take is to first organize the customer base into the categories by month and the categories listed here, and then capture the relevant information into the summary tab. Lastly, I will then feed this information into the dashboard to present to executives. So with that, let's begin. The very first thing that we want to do is categorize our customers into their respective categories. I'm going to first reference to the market data information and then document the data that they've provided us. So I'm just gonna actually copy this here first. And I can see that casual consumers consume from zero to 30 hours per month. Avid consumers consume 31 to 45. And then active consumers consume 46 to Let's just place 999 as a very high number. The benchmark for casual consumers is 10%, avid consumers is 70, and then active consumers is 20. And with this information, we can then begin categorizing our customers into these three categories here. Now we have the hours watched per monthly, and this is a very important information that we can use to categorize our customers. However, what I'm actually going to do is calculate again six month average. And the reason why I want to do this is to smooth out the data. And this will essentially remove any outliers. For example, if there was one consumer who normally consumes 30 hours per month, but then let's say for one month they got fired or they had a lot of time and they consumed around 70, we wouldn't still classify them as an active consumer because we know on average, they're expected to consume around 30 in normal circumstances. By calculating the trailing six month average of each customer by period, so that customers are properly categorized in their sections. And one more thing to note here is that there are periods where customers are inactive. And if they're inactive, it means that they have not renewed their subscription for that period. So we're going to try to exclude that from our six month average because it will skew our data. So let's set up our average ifs where we want to average the hours watched, where the status is active, where the period is less than or equal to the current period and the period is greater to or equal to five months prior to the current period. And then lastly, we have to make sure it assesses by customer ID. And then one more thing I'm going to do here is actually round the number to zero so that we don't have decimals. And once we begin categorizing them 
you'll sort of kind of see why we do that. And because the data set is really large, you also notice a lot of calculation errors here and there. It just takes time to process um, applying a formula to 148,000 rows of data. And now that we have the six month average, let's begin categorizing the employees. The way we want to categorize the employees is to X look up the value of one where the six month average is greater to or less than the start period times where the six month average is less than the end period. And then we want to find out the category. And now we have all the data necessary to support our data set tab. To calculate this, we're just going to count ifs, the category, and the period. Period is going to be D5, and the category is going to be B7. So let's just apply this universally throughout. And I did create a section for six month average and the monthly. However, for this case, I'm just going to use a six month average because this is usually a more reliable metric. However, you're free to practice with the monthly section here as well. Once we have our data set, we then have to bring this information in into our summary. So I'm going to use an index match formula to capture this here. And then update, we want to match the vertical criteria with our category and then our horizontal criteria with the month. And this tab is already formulated to update based on the analysis period here. So if I were to update this to March 31st, 2024, you'll notice all the figures update accordingly. And as of June 2024, we know that it's always going to be the first column because it's formulated like that. And then for actual, I just want to calculate the percentage weighting. Whereas the benchmark, I need to bring in the benchmark amount for the categories that we're analyzing. And we are done setting up all the data set necessary for the dashboard. Just a quick glance here, we can see that we have a higher casual base compared to the industry benchmark. However, we have a higher volume of active users, which will likely generate more revenue for the company. So although the casual metrics are not that great, the active metrics is a very good sign of the company performing pretty strong. So now that we have this information, let's just quickly set up one graph for our dashboard that compares the benchmark and the actual. So we're going to go to the insert tab, set up a bar graph and under select data, I'm just going to actually select, let's just select this for now. I'm going to remove the blank series. We have benchmark and actual, and then I'm just going to update this to row nine. And now we have a chart. One really cool thing here that you can do is set up a combo, make them both clustered columns, and then set up a secondary axis. Actually, I'm going to add a, a legend first, so benchmark. So we need to make the benchmark a more monotone color, and let's reduce our gap width to be a little bit wider. And then we can also change the transparency to let's say 50%. And then for our actual, what we want to do is change it to a change to green. One last thing you want to do is make sure that the axes are actually the same so that they're actually comparable. So we'll keep this as 0 0.8. However, for the secondary axes, we'll keep this as 0 0.8 as well. So we can see that from the budget side, our actuals are pretty under for avid consumers. The casual side, we're well above. However, for the active side, we're also well above. 
So it shows that we're exceeding the benchmark for active and casual users, whereas for avid users, we're a little bit under, but this is compensated for a higher volume of active users. Data visualization is extremely valuable for FPNA and information presentation as well. And of course, for the dashboard, you want to make the graph something more noticeable and more professional so that it can be easily more understood. And that covers the analysis of KPIs and non-financial metrics. I hope this video helped you gain insight to techniques to analyzing non-financial data and KPIs. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. I'm going to be uploading more educational content going forward, so follow for more.